Hi everybody, I'm getting ready to start a new playlist and this is on sewing terms so that when I'm mentioning how to do this thing or that thing, whatever the technique is, you'll know what it is. So I'm starting with A and I'm going to go all the way through the line. Now this is not going to be every single term. I have a list that I started with. Um, this first portion will be starting alphabetically later on i'll add more and it might fall out of alphabetical order but i think it'll be very helpful in that showing you how to do these terms um, i'm showing you what the name is how to do it and what you'll need to do the jobs so um, uh, i will leave a link in the description box for each of the things that I'm talking about. So um, tear away stabilizer or interfacing or a certain presser foot or whatever. I'll leave those links in the description box and they help me if you use those links and you purchase those things if you buy on Amazon. Um, while we're here, why don't you go ahead and uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload more videos and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share if you find quality in my videos. Thank you. Bye. Okay, for the first technique, which is appliquing, this is where you're going to want to set your needle. Um, I'm going to do the widest zigzag and you can see what that looks like. And you'll need to bring your needle or your stitch length down here. And this I may have to adjust as I go along so that um, the zigzag are close enough together to where you don't see fabric underneath it. And it'll kind of give it a look of like a ribbon on your, your project. When you do an applique, this is what you need. You need a, sta a tear away stabilizer. Um, then you need your fabric that you're going to applique onto and then you need your fabric that you're going to applique to the first fabric. Now you can do it like this and pin it around and then sew around it or I would recommend using stitch witchery. I don't have any on hand right now but the the stuff I recommend comes in uh, a sheet or like on a bolt and you can find it in the fabric store with the interfacings and the uh, stabilizers and stuff. And it will have a paper backing and one side will be like this stuff, except I would for this right here, obviously I would recommend white, but I don't have any and I don't have a sheet. So I'm going to use the roll. So I'm just going to take this over to the ironing board and just um, ladies here and then press this down here and then we'll get to sewing. And for this project, you are going to use, you're going to use this foot. Well, this is what I'm using. This is not um, an applique foot. An applique foot, instead of having this closed, it's like two prongs like this out here but I don't have one. So I'm going to use this because it has a zigzag uh, hole there. So that's what I'm using. That's what I've always used. I used to do this years and years ago, 20 years ago, when I used to applique things on kids clothes and sell them on eBay. So um, I'm going to go press this and I'll be right back. As I sew along, I am going to make the adjustments that I need and then I will explain what I'm doing. So I have right here, the top fabric is right in the middle. It comes right between these two toes here because I wanna make sure that it's in the middle between where the needle comes down on this side and then this side. And I have it like halfway through the buttonhole, I mean the, the stitch length. And um, if it's too thick and gets bunchy, then you need to lengthen your stitch. Now this one looks too wide because I can see the fabric underneath it. And I'll show you what that looks like. There's something wrong with my machine. Oh, that's what it is. Let's see, what, let's see what it does now. Okay, you can see here how you can see the fabric underneath. That stitch is too long. So I'm going to 
make it shorter, closer to zero. And it's still too long. You want the needle to fall almost right next to the one previously. And I'll show you what this looks like. You can see it's getting better. Try not to push your fabric through. Let the feed dogs do all the work. Okay, I had an issue. You could see where it was pulling tight right here. And I knew something was hung up either on my uh, thread or my bobbin. And it was my bobbin, um, as it was coming to the end, it was really loose and it was the tension was off and then it got kind of got caught up on something. So um, I had to stop and put a new bobbin in. And I'm not really concerned with the, fa the color thread I'm using. I'm just showing you the technique. So we're going to start again here and remember to let the feed dogs do the work Okay, it's getting a lot better. You can see it back here. You can still see a little bit of it. I'm gonna take it down one more notch and see what it does. So you can see right here, let me pull it out. Okay, this is where we started. And this right here, see that line down the middle? That's not supposed to be there. What happened was my thread was caught up in um, the bobbin, uh, uh, the, the spool. And so it was pulling too tight and it was changing everything. So look how pretty back there. Um, and then I shortened my thread stitch, shortened it, and then shortened it here. And that's when I had the issue with the bobbin. And then this was like one notch above the zero stitch length. And then I brought it down closer to the zero and this is what it looks like. And this is what it should look like. And you can even probably go a little bit smaller. Um, but you have to be careful that if it starts bunching, it's just going to create a, a big lump here. So somewhere around the zero, and this is what it, my machine setting looks like. It's like literally right, like one notch in front of the zero or maybe two notches. So that's what appliquing looks like. And then when you are done, you can just tear this off so you don't have it on the back and that's a tear away okay on this um, portion I'm going to give you all of the B words and those are bias based bar tack and backstitch now bias it's not a technique but it is in one of our terms and bias is when you have a woven fabric, um, it's not stretchy going this way. You can see it has a little bit of give, but it's not considered a stretchy. And it doesn't stretch this way either. Bias is when you go along the diagonal. This is the, the grain, the cross grain, and this is the bias. And the bias gives it a little stretch. And um, this is a picture of a dress that I made uh, for my first fashion show and it's made um, it is cut on the bias okay the next one is backstitch and 
I know you guys have already seen this because I backstitch a lot and I, I remind you guys to do it. Um, what it is, is when you start sewing, it's when you backstitch a couple times. Now, when I start sewing on um, a project or a seam, I come in, you can see I can't, I come in a little bit and then I backstitch first. So it goes backwards and then I come forwards, forward, sorry. And then when you sew and you come to the end of your, your stitching, then you do another back stitch. And that is back stitch. And what that does is it locks these in so that um, your fabric won't come apart. Now, a basting stitch is when you take your stitch length all the way to the longest stitch. And mine is a four, you leave um, it here on the straight stitch. Now, when you do a basting stitch, you don't back stitch. This is a temporary stitch that will either, if you're doing it on a neckline before you start sewing, it's going to prevent you from stretching the neckline out while you're working with it. If you are sewing fabrics together, it's a temporary stitch to hold it in place until um, you do your permanent stitches. And this is the longest stitch, straight stitch. And you can see even how, how much faster it feeds through. And that's what that looks like. And you can see the difference, the length difference. And when you're finished, you'll just take the back stitch, the back thread, and it just makes it so much easier to pull it all out and you're done. I think Cheetah was talking. <laughs> if you hear this dog, he cries and he wails like a banshee every single time his family leaves. So I leave my door open now so I can talk to him and he can come in my room if he wants to. So he's fine. I gave him a snack. I pet him and I talk to him, but he still wants his family. So now we're going to talk about um, a bar tack and you'll find these at the bottom of pockets on belt loops um, like on the side of your pockets like denim there's usually a little bar tack down there um, and it's the same stitch that you would use for um, a buttonhole sorry so this is what it is it's going to be a narrow I'm sorry I'm trying to look through the phone and doesn't really work. You want a narrow stitch and you want it very close together. So you want a short stitch and a narrow zigzag. And that's what it is right there. I had to adjust the, the um, length of the stitch. So it's just a tight zigzag. In fact, let me go a little bit um, shorter of a stitch. Okay, this one looks so much better. And I have it right next to the um, the zero. So that's a narrow, like I said, it was a narrow zigzag here. And then look how close it is to the zero there. So that is a bar tack. Okay, our next term is casing. And this is where um, it generally calls, if you're making a casing for an elastic, it'll say, it'll say fold in a, a quarter of an inch and then fold in again um, for whatever uh, width of elastic you're using. So if you are using a half inch elastic, then when you fold this over, you need to make sure that your elastic 
will fit in there um, between this fold and the stitching line, not this fold. Um, because if you go off that, that fold too much, then it might make it too tight. So this is a quarter of inch elastic, so I'm just gonna fold it here and and this will be the casing. So you just use a straight stitch at 2.5 and you just fold, you just stitch right alongside this fold here. And, the, and on this stitch, you will have to back stitch. And I went off. So if you take it all the way to the end, and backstitch again. And that's what it looks like. And you can see where I went off here. So be careful for that.